Okay, so welcome back to the uh, recap of the uh, World Chess Championship match currently in progress between Nepal and Dink. Uh, game 11 of the match ended in a draw. And uh, what can I say is that uh, this was, again, a very professional, very solid draw. Um, black player demonstrated pretty much perfect uh, analysis and the approach of how to make a draw with black in the well-known theoretical lines. So, let's go to the beginning. We see it is Spanish game. Uh, it is more classical Spanish game and now white plays d3. Um, he doesn't want to play rook e1, going to b5 marshal, and so he plays d3 immediately. Black plays uh, d3, d6, and uh, knight a5 is the threat, so white has now to play either c3, a3, or a4. He plays a3, and this was, um, again, very popular line a few years ago. It's still being played, still being contested um, once in a while at the top level. Uh, black plays first line moves, knight c3. Bishop e6, pretty much forced. Um, white plays bishop g5. He wants to take control of this weakened d5 square and then get a small pool. Um, castle, castle, knight d5. And now black just plays g6, which is um, very interesting. Usually black played uh, something like knight c6, bishop e7, but g6, bishop g7 is a very viable plan. So let's take a look at this. Uh, queen d2, the threat is knight f6, trying to hit the knight. If the knight leaves, then uh, white can play c3 and uh, sort of potentially go for b4 or a4. Again, it's a little bit unpleasant to deal with this knight and the bishop goes to g7. You have the possibility to play knight g5 at some point, probably not right now because of the pin. But again, h3 and uh, king h8 with knight of f5 at some point. Uh, you will have to play a4, uh, but black should be okay here because again, a pair of bishops, very strong pair. Knight is very strong, but uh, he closes off the bishop and black is now ready to go f5. And there are plenty of uh, uh, games in this structure. Sometimes white plays knight e3. Again, queen d2 is not really that great placed. I suspect that queen d2 was more intuitive move. White often plays here c3, knight d2. And the idea is to keep f4 just in case and also to keep the second knight going to e3 square. So queen d2 was kind of unusual, but uh, black plays bishop g7. This looks kind of weird, but at the same time, there is nothing wrong with it. Knight on a5 is fine. If you play b4, uh, black is going to play knight c6. Um, and this structure is not really that great for white um, because you don't have the bishop. Yeah. Uh, when your opponent has a pair of bishops, you really want to keep the structure closed in this case. So Napo plays um, knight g5, but this allows black to play this incredible move. It's pretty incredible because black is just going to close this bishop. Again, thanks to this knight on a5, it's on the rim, but it's effective. The threat is to take this guy on d5 and then use the pin. So. Um, Napo plays very logical line, otherwise, you know, there is no reason to play knight g5 in the first place. Takes takes, knight e3, and black plays very, very accurate. Bishop h6, you need to get rid of this knight, or at least pin this knight, to make sure the pressure on this pawn, and by extension, the pawn on e6 is um, deviated. So, uh, the only thing is here that Napo plays uh, rook d1, I thought it was kind of a little bit uh, early, you should really play queen e2 first. Uh, create the threat of taking on c4 or uh, moving the knight away so black is forced to recapture and then after queen c7 or rook b8 probably is going to be played like in the game. Uh, there are very few pieces left on board. Uh, the pawn on c4 is very effective in closing this bishop and um, again very few pieces left. There is not much place, uh, not much play left. Uh, black just plays queen c7, keeps this pawn uh, protected and this bishop is not going to enter the game. So the only way for this bishop to enter the game is to play something like this with the hope that the black takes with this pawn because then you can play something like b4 and then you can open the knight but even then uh, black knight gets to d4, very strong square, unopposed um, but it looks a little bit better for white because of this pawn majority here kind of um, double pawns here, potential f4, and black king is not so safe, so this is still a tiny bit better for white. 
which is why black should recapture here on c4 with the knight and force the trades because after this trade uh, if white plays b4 then it's queen b6 forcing the trade of the queens and the rook end game this is obviously pretty equal uh, very 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 drawish end game especially after rook c8 uh, everything is equal material is equal the doubleness of this pawn is not sufficient enough for white to claim big advantage there are no minor pieces uh, only rooks left and this is clearly drawn so um so now we play is rook d1 uh, it feels like black uh, just basically neutralized uh, white's whole initiative rook d1 yeah, eyeing this pawn on d6 in the future black plays rook b8 again eyeing counter the pawn on b2 and now white has to do something and he takes on c4 uh if we play queen e2 it leads to the same position bishop e3 queen e3 and then uh, just queen c7 and again it's a very very similar position so white takes on c4 immediately and black takes with the knight again very important take take and nepo here understands that this is very likely draw he's okay with the draw because situation the match um, is plus one score for him after this draw he there are only three games left um, and because he's leading in the match he is fine with all the remaining games ending up in a draw um, because then he wins the title so he takes on d6 and goes into this rook end game which is immediately a draw there is some finesse black has a little bit careful in order not to end up giving white too much material but at the end um, there is a total exchange you attack the spawn but very important checks uh, the king is uh, forced to go all the way to h3 as far as away as possible from protecting the spawn and now black switches to counter attack king of seven black uh, white rushes back with the king to protect his central pawn but he is too late because uh, black king attacks rook first there is only one square for white to move to keep this pawn protected and black counter attacks this rook again and the players agreed on the draw because um, if you play king f3 black just takes and takes on e4 again forcing the game to the drawn king and pawn end game just like in the last game so the big question right now is um, there are only three games left but ding does have two white games and uh, we can fully expect that there will be some absolutely crazy novelty coming up from him trying to take Nepo out of his uh, home preparation and um, it'll be very exciting to see what uh, he's gonna show especially that the next game will come after the rest day which is today so tomorrow and after tomorrow there are two games in a row I believe and uh, then there should be another rest day before the last round and um, last round you know like um, if it will be a last round if uh, ding wins uh, the game then they will continue to play um tie breaks right if uh, the match is tied after required 14 classical games are played then the players will have to play tie breaks but it's a little bit too early to talk about it again uh, ding is one point behind but he has two white games and that's still something despite the fact that as you have seen in this game the previous game with the modern uh, opening preparation pretty much teams analyzing um, every possible line and they coming up with the safest way to neutralize white's advantage it is very hard um, but hopefully they will be able to find something so um, that was the recap for this game for the spanish game and um, hope you enjoy it don't forget to put the likes subscribe to the channel and i'll see you guys um, for the next recap, have a good day.